Good morning. How are you today? <clears throat> Gosh, it's been so long since I've been live. It seems like forever. So I'm going to show you guys how to scour the wool that's in the spinning box this month. Um, the spinning box is, oh, I'm Mary Edbert. <laughs> I am the owner of Kamash Fiber Arts, and I also have a school that has um, fiber classes called the Kamash School of Fiber Arts, and I also run the spinning box, and I'm really busy, but I love it. So welcome to my live. Um, I just wanted to talk about the spinning box. It's going to be mailed on the 25th of this month. I am in uh, North Carolina for a couple weeks. I live in Florida, but I came down to visit my daughter. So I'm in her little cabin that she rents out um, today for my live. <clears throat> so when I get back next, next Saturday, we'll ship out the boxes on Tuesday. Um, the spinning box is a monthly fiber box filled with four ounces of a custom color blend and four ounces of a custom luxury undyed blend with um, a ounce of um, raw fiber. We support the um, community of fiber artists and shepherds and farms, and we love to support them. You also get an ounce of some funky fiber like mint or um, soy bean or something like that. So it's a lot of fun. And there's always some really fun little add-ins and I write something really nice and it just makes people smile and it's something that they can look forward to. Um, gosh, what's been going on? So gosh, I had a cold for like two weeks and my kids said get a COVID test, which was negative, but it seems like every time I go out and start going to the gym, I'll get sick and I get a cold. So I had a cold for a couple weeks, <clears throat> but much better, and North Carolina is so beautiful right now this time of year. Fly Magazine, the next issue is the electric issue, and I have an article in there on electric drum carters, um, the pros and cons and all that stuff, so make sure you check Fly Magazine, and if you do not subscribe, it's a fantastic magazine, and each quarter is like a full class, so it's very nice. Um, the spinning and fiber extravaganza workshop is on module five, which is worsted and June 1st. Oh, woolen. Sorry. It's woolen this month. Next month will be worsted. So we're going to be in our fifth module on June 1st. And then for July is dying. So I'm already getting started on that one. And there is a ton of information. So <clears throat> I, I mean, I die already, but the more I research it, the more I realize that people aren't teaching certain aspects of it that are really important for a dyer to know. So I will tell you all that stuff. It's, it's really fun. I mean, there's so many ways to dye things. It's It boggles your mind, and I won't be able to do them all, but I will certainly teach you um, more than, I mean, what I know, but I know more than I'm teaching in terms of the technique of dyeing, but you're going to get a good base good fundamentals. And that's the most important thing is to get your good fundamentals and build on top of that. Good morning, Karen. Okay. So um, we're going to talk about the fiber for the spinning box this month. It's, it's always, it's typically always raw lately. And um, it is Swiss filet, um, Scottish blackface cross from Teresa Lynn Caruso. Can you see that staple on this thing? Look at that. This is a, du a dual coat because a Scottish blackface is a dual. I think this is bred one time with a Swiss filet. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sure someone will tell me I'm saying it wrong. They always do. <laughs> so we have a dual coat. So the outer coat is long. And if you can see, it's very hairy. It's very thick. Doesn't have a lot of cramp. The undercoat is a little bit softer, though in all, this is a coarse grade wool up to very coarse. Um, you also need to know that the Swiss filet, even though they are the cutest sheep in the whole wide world, they have these little black faces. I mean, you can't even see their nose and their eyes and their mouth. It's just like this face with this white wool. They're a coarse grade. Um, so they're good for rugs and outerwear and um, jackets and blankets and um, purses and things like that. But they're really, really pretty little sheep. 
So I wanted to show you how I'm going to scour this. And I also wanted to show you how to separate the coats. You can separate the coats by hand or you can separate the coats with combs. So it's really pretty easy. All right, so tell you what, let me take you over to the sink. I kind of got some things started and I wanted to show you how I do that. Okay, so I'm gonna finish filling this one up. This is, okay, that's not very hot. Hey, thanks for joining me guys, appreciate that. I miss, I miss you all, <laughs> I miss going live. The fun thing about being here with my in my daughter's little cottage, I have three grandkids that live, um, they live just up the driveway and they'll come down and visit me every day. So it's, it's just so nice to, um, to have visitors. I love it. I love it. it. It fills me up and it fills them up. And then I go home and I'll, and I'll come back in a few months. <laughs> so it's pretty nice. All right, so I get really hot tap water and this fiber, um, it has a fair amount of lanolin, but if you have my book, The Art of Washing Wool Mohair and Alpaca, or if you're taking the um, workshop, there is a scouring module in there, which was last month. Um, it tells you a ton of stuff that you need to know. So um, there's a fair amount of lanolin, use a lot of water. Today, we're going to use Unicorn Power Scour, which is one of my favorite wool soaps. I absolutely love it. So I always put the soap in after I fill um, the vessel up because if I put the soap in first and then put the water, I'm going to get too many bubbles and I'm not going to be able to see the wool. And I like to see what's going on if I have to get my hands in there and clean some tips or something like that. So um, I like to um, get my hands in there. But can you see how, look at that water already. Look how clean that is already. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to leave that in there for a second. So one of the things you could do, you could either scour it dirty like that, but some people, I'm going to move this out of the way. Some people um, might like to rinse it off because in wool, <clears throat> there's always contaminants and the contaminants are dirt, um, VM, anything that's dissolvable. Well, dissolvable, dissolvable by water, but some contaminants you need some tools to take out. And then you have your lanolin, which you need soap and hot water for. So it's it's pretty involved. So if you're if you're a brand new scourer, check out my book. It's I'm telling you, for the money, it's worth it, not ruining wool. All right, so I'm just going to rinse this, and it could be cool water, it doesn't matter, because whatever is in this wool that's going to be dissolvable by water, it will take out um, the cold water will take it out. So just by rinsing it, do you see the difference? Check this out. Look at the difference. Just rinsing that, what that made, the difference it made. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you rinse it first and then scour it or scour it dirty because that water is going to pull all that dirt off anyway. So it doesn't matter. If you have a um, really, really dirty wall that has... Um, a lot of dirt on it and you feel more comfortable rinsing it, you go right ahead and rinse it. Um, oh, sorry. The, um, it won't felt because you don't have any soap or hot water or anything like that. Sorry about that. So you can do whatever you want. All right. So this is kind of, I'm going to let this soak. I usually let it scour <clears throat> maybe 15 minutes. You have to make sure you don't let that water cool down below a hundred degrees because the lanolin won't be melted anymore and it will attach back onto your wool. So lanolin melts between 100 and 140 degrees. You don't want 100 degrees water because then it's gonna go below 100. So I usually do 115, 120, 125. Um, I usually just use my really hot tap water and I do just fine. Now mohair is a different animal, of course. That's in my book. Take a look. Um, mohair can take a little bit um, different different um, temperatures. All right, so this one I already scoured. And I usually just give it a little squeeze, take out that lanolin, and into the rinse um, it goes. But look how dirty, just that little bit. Look how dirty that is. And I'm going to take, I'm going to send that outside because they have a septic tank here. 
Okay, so the rinse, I mean, you could leave it in there or, I mean, if it's just a little bit, it's, you know, it's probably done. Okay, so there is the, there is the fiber and then I will put it in a towel and squeeze it. And if you have um, something like a Nina soft dryer or a spin dryer, you could put it in there as well. But sometimes I'll just squeeze it out and then I will um, lay that out to dry outside. Isn't that pretty? But this is very, it's very coarse, but it's really cool. Okay, so let me take you over to the table and let me show you, um, you know, maybe we can comb a little or even um, I want to show you how to do it by hand as well. Okay, so to separate the coats by hand, hi, Lori. What you will do is take a small lock. And I'm just going to take a small lock because I want to show you. You would, <laughs> you would grasp the end of the lock and then just pull this out. So do you see how that separated it? So there's your, there's your outer, outer layer and there's the inner layer. So the inner layer is definitely shorter. The outer layer is longer. Because this outer layer doesn't have any crimp and it's, um, let me move my computer. And um, it's pretty hairy. This would be great for um, a work. You know, spin it, spin it with a twist, with a good twist in it. Because it's so long, it has less ends in a length of fiber. And man, you're not going to pull that apart. That is like strong stuff. Um, this stuff you could put in a drum carter. You could comb it as well. And we're going to do that now because it's definitely a good length to comb or a good length to card. You wouldn't want to card this. It's just too long. And it would wrap around the drum and you would have a really hard time getting it off. All right, so let's see. Let me um, let me see if we can get this down and we can card some for or um, comb some and show you. If I don't get my cord in there. I hope you guys are doing okay. We <laughs> we had a gas shortage here. There's still no gas in the gas stations. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. All right. So when I comb these long um, fibers, I may loosen the ends. So I want to load the cut in on the comb. Yes, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. Oh my gosh. Just one thing after another, right? One thing after another. And then I just loosen the end just a little bit. And I, I gently go this way, gently put it on, make sure I don't, um, myself yeah it's like the gas station down the street doesn't have um doesn't have any gas <laughs> i think people are um getting stressed out you know especially companies that use um you know gas for maybe lawnmowers or things like that they're the ones going and filling up a little bit because they have to work it's their business right whatever i just received those oh oh karen did you get these the um, Woolen Woodworks, do you love them? I know, I'm not kidding. I do everything on these. I do um, coarse, I do ultra fine merino, I do everything. I love them. Okay, so I'm gonna, hopefully you can see this. I'm just gonna go. So I, so did you see that loop over? It looped over into the comb. So I wanna make sure it stays out of the comb there. It's hard to do this with a camera like right next to it, but I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Oh yeah, they, yeah, Lori, they'd be great for alpaca. Absolutely, absolutely. If you have a long enough staple, um, you can definitely comb the alpaca for sure. I want you to see this. There is less waste when I open up the backs. And if you can't get it out, just give it a little wiggle. But I'm gonna have less waste because I opened up the backs of the lock. So there's a little bit of waste there. Okay. So this is my second pass or my pass back onto the combs. You know, I used to raise alpacas and um, I had a Patrick Green drum carter that I carted them on. I didn't have combs at the time because I was kind of new and didn't really know that stuff. 
Um, but you could definitely calm it. Yeah, you can calm it. <laughs> Hello, Fiber Arts fan. <laughs> You know, we had 25 alpacas, and I kind of miss them, and I kind of don't. But we moved um, from Utah to Florida, and the Florida people here said, the alpaca people, not much left, um, said that you had to air condition your barns. I'm like, oh, heck no. <laughs> I'm not air conditioning the barn <laughs> for alpacas. You know, and then the, the price of alpacas started going down, so we kind of bought when um, things were... Um, pretty expensive. So we thought, you know what, maybe it's just time to sell them. So we got rid of all of them. Um, you just bought different, what, combs, Gabriel? Gabriella? That's okay. That's all right. If you bought different, I don't know if you're saying you bought, <laughs> oh, these are woolen woodworks. This is woolen woodworks. They're a two pitch comb, which means they have two rows of tines. They're fairly close together. I, I don't know. They just work. And then I love that they attach to the table. Oh, and underneath, because this is a little rounded, I actually had to put um, I put some um, non-skid stuff under it. I wrapped it around the edge and then clamped it because it really held it tight because it fell off the other day. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. You're going to be fine. Now, now when I pull off um, a dual coat, you're going to get the outer outer coat first and then the inner coat's going to stay on here. So when you pull off the big robing, you're going to see that you're going to have the outer coat then the inner coat and you can just pull apart. Oh yeah, there's a picture of them in my scary book because I just adore these. Oh, you know, and I did get, um, I don't want to say that, I don't know the brand name, but I got a pair of combs that didn't have an attachment and I didn't like them as much. Okay. Here's my little, not this light's not real great. There's my little threader and there's my diz. I put the concave side towards the, um, towards the combs because I want the, the fiber to funnel in. All right. So if you want to use, it doesn't matter what size um, hole you use. Sometimes people will say, well, if you're going to spin a thin yarn, use a thin hole. If you're going to spin a thicker yarn, whatever. You know, you just decide what you um, find is best for you. Okay, then I put that little piece of um, wire through there. So the wire is here. You can't really see it. I take the end and I twist it. I loop it through. And then I'll pull it through the hole. Now, the biggest thing about combing is you want to make sure you don't draft past your staple length. Because if you draft past your staple length, you're going to pull it apart. And then you also have to remember with these dual coats, the outer layer is super long. The inner layer is a little shorter. So you kind of have to adjust adjust for that. But this, these um, horse grades are really easy to draft. But make sure and use your little grippy, squeezy things. Exercise your hands. Keep your grip strong as you get older because you want to keep doing this stuff, right? I, I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting old. <laughs> but um, because I um, keep my grip strength strong, I have a little squeezy thing on my desk. And I use it all the time because I don't want to stop doing this. All right, there's the waist. Not bad. I'm going to lay this down. As I fall, I'm going to lay this down on a darker um, background and I want to show you what it looks like. So give me just a second. Okay. All right, let me move my stuff. I will pull this over. Okay, hopefully you can see this. So, here is the roving that, or well, actually it's comb top that came off of that. So this was the outer layer. This is the inner layer. It's not as profound as maybe an Icelandic or a Shetland. Would a hackle work the same? 
Um, here's the thing about hackle, Sharon. You would still need combs because you need to um, kind of comb. Well, no, because I put it on one comb and I took it off one comb and put it on the other comb. So if you just put it on the hackle, you have to do it. Well, I do it twice because I find it is better. It takes out the VM better. It takes out the second cuts better. So you can have um, combs and a hackle and then just load up your hackle and take off a big comb top. You could do that. So, but I don't really find, um, you know, just a hackle um, is good for that. Also another thing um, to know, okay, let me, let me do this first. Okay, so this is the finer and you can actually feel the difference and this is the thicker. So you can kind of see, I can kind of see where the, um, the difference is and then I would just pull it apart. So here's my outer layer and here's my inner layer. I don't know if you can, you can see the difference. I can see the difference on camera. So what I wanna tell you is if you buy a coated sheet, okay? And um, I want to show you, I want to show you this pad. This pad's really cool too, if I can get it going. If you buy a coated sheet, there's going to be second cuts. There's going to be second cuts in any sheet that is sheared. Guaranteed, guaranteed. Because the shearers, um, they can't get every single second cut. They can't shear exactly um, in the line of, you know, where they cut it the first time. And then you have your sorters, you know, they do the best they can. But remember, there's always those second cuts that kind of wiggle into the base. Can you look at this? Can you see this? It changes colors. I don't know if you, oh, yeah. See, <laughs> this is like a big, a big mouse pad. I've been using a hackle with my double coated, but with the Luet minis. Yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. But that's how you separate the two coats on a dual coat. And this is in the spinning box for this month. So you know how to scour it. It's a really easy scour. It's just hot water, soap, lots of water. Very, very, very simple. And I know I've given some really, really hard fibers to scour. And I will give you instructions on how to do it. Whether you need to pre-soak, pre-landlin soak, pre-suant -soak, pre soak, whatever it needs, I will tell you how to do that. So, okay, all right, let me put you back up here so I can see you, you can see me. I guess, look at that, I guess. <laughs> that looks like a long gray hair, right? <laughs> Isn't this cabin cute? This is such a cute little cabin. And it's so nice to have, to have some quiet time. <laughs> I like it. Okay, um, anybody have any questions? Like a little mini class. That's fun. Um, do I spin them separately? Okay, here's the thing with with Icelandic. Let's talk about Icelandic first because Icelandic is a dual coat. Um, you can um, scour them and drum card them together and then spin a low twist yarn and it's called a lopi yarn and it's what they make sweaters out of. Um, you can separate um, in Icelandic, it's called the fell and the tog. I don't know if you would name this the fell and the tog, but it's the outer layer and the inner layer. You could, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if you want to card it because that outer layer is this long. It's going to wrap around the drum and you'll never get it off. I mean, you'll have to cut it. It'll just, it's, it'll be a nightmare, honestly. <laughs> or if you want to cut it, you could just card the whole thing together and then spin them together. Again, it's a coarse or a very coarse grade wool so it's not going to be next to skin it will definitely be a rug quality but still every wool is good for something every wool um you could spin this outer hairy layer and make a warp because it has really long fibers so when you think about spinning and you think about spinning a long fiber you have don't have a lot of ends right because the ends are so far apart this would make an excellent warp you can definitely spin this into something else and it is noticeably softer and it's loftier. So you could spin this into something else, but you could do whatever you want. Okay, let's see. Um, thanks for joining me. What time is it? My grandkids are coming over for lunch pretty soon. So, and then they're gonna sleep overnight tomorrow night. So, all right guys. Hey, it was a lot of fun seeing you. Don't forget about Ply Magazine. 
and my article in, in the Plan Magazine. Don't forget about the spinning and fiber extra extravaganza workshop. We're in the woolen module. Uh, next month is the worsted. If you join, you start from lesson one, module one, and work your way through. Once you're done paying for the whole year, you'll see there's different payment structures. You can pay all at once or you can pay monthly or every, you'll see. Um, once you pay, you have access to that workshop whenever you want, as long as I am alive or as long as my website is alive. You do not own the um, the thing, so please don't share them with people. Don't share your passwords and all that stuff because this is my living. It's how I make my living and how I pay my bills, and I absolutely love sharing what I know with all of you. Um, all right. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.